right where in the book of Galatians. I just pray the Almighty Lord, as our great Lord, Savior, Redeemer, the Savior of the body, the Lord Jesus Christ, and His Holy Spirit to help me to do this study because in myself I am a total zero. I can do nothing without Christ and the Spirit of God and the pure words of God because you are in the book of Galatians. This is a very important book for many reasons. But let's go to chapter 2. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation. That's really good. He didn't, Paul, <laughs> he didn't go to booking.com uh, or travel, whatever it is, you know, trying to go to holiday. He was moving in his ministry according to the revelations that the Lord Jesus Christ was giving him constantly, continually, in the course of this mission that yeah, because Paul <laughs> has been put by the Lord Jesus Christ in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Question, which gospel? By large, people think any gospel would do. No, 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 no. While it is absolutely wonderful and marvelous that this book, the King James Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, all the way, every single word is pure, every single word is the word of God. We need to rightly divide the word of truth, and we need to understand where we are situated now. And who is the apostle? Who, he, who is our apostle? I eat the words, you know, I should have breakfast this morning, but I didn't. Our apostle is not Peter or James and John, who we respect as the twelve, uh, you know, part of the twelve, the apostles that Christ called in his earthly ministry to Israel. <clears throat> they were preaching to the Jews only. But the Lord in Acts 9.15, talking about solo Tarsus, which we know to be Paul, he said to Ananias, go that way, for he... Solo Tarsus, now Paul, only because Sol is the name in Hebrew and Paul is the name in Latin, and he had double citizenship. He was a Hebrew, Hebrews, and he was a Roman from Tarsus, Cilicia. Go that way, he said to Ananias. He was afraid to meet with him, you know. For he's a chosen vessel, for he's a chosen vessel, I repeat, for he's a chosen vessel unto me. To bear my name to the Gentiles. Oh, praise God Almighty. All of a sudden, yeah, we are the number one target of the ministry. Because we never had any covenants. We were no part of Israel. The Lord made covenants with Israel. Yeah, prophets, you know, kings. The Lord gave Moses, but when Christ came to earth he, he was born in Israel of the land of David we know Christ is be, being true God true man of the seed of David according to the flesh and you know Christ being God by the power of the resurrection and he calls Paul because to him he, he gives the revelation of the mystery in this the dispensation of the grace of God in which we live now in the last 2000 years there is hope for us. Praise God. We are not, we are not Israel, the new Israel, the spiritual Israel, uh, replacement Israel, please. And there is no Israel God on earth now. Lo am I, it's not my people. The, the little flock, they will be resurrected in the future. Praise be to God. After the church gets caught up. Paul moves by revelation because he's a chosen vessel. Just like the Lord, the Lord Himself, Jesus, chose twelve apostles for the twelve tribes of Israel, He chose this man, ungodly sinner, enemy of God. He was persecuted. He was injurious. He was blasphemer. Everything. Just like we all sinners, right? And saved him because Christ specialized in saving ungodly sinners, enemies of God, like me and you, and gave him. A, Fantastic, glorious mission, you know, to be the apostle, preacher, and teacher of the Gentiles. 
And so he said, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel. Now, please notice this. Which have preached among the Gentiles. <clears throat> what gospel? Is he preaching the gospel of the kingdom? Is he preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven? No, it's not. Even though we know and we, I believe and we believe that Jesus Christ is indeed the King of Israel. He's King of kings and lords of lords. He's the shepherd of Israel. Praise God. The flock, you know, he said, I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's not us, you know. We were not part of the, the covenants. Ephesians 2.11 tells us. Wherefore, remember, you know, Paul says. Anyway, anyway, which gospel is he preaching? John 3.16? No. Even though John 6.3 is extremely important. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever would believe on him should not uh, perish by everlasting life. So he came to Nicodemus. He said, marvel not. I say to thee, Nicodemus, ye, the nation, must be born again. Are we born again? No, we're not. We couldn't, we couldn't possibly be because we're not part of Israel. We were never born of God. We were Gentiles in the flesh. We're called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And remember, Paul says in Ephesians 2, 11, that at that time, mm -hmm, praise God, we were aliens and strangers from the covenants of the Republic of Israel, of the Commonwealth of Israel. Sorry, man, Republic. Sorry, you know. I'm an old man. <laughs> we were without God, without Christ, without hope in the world. But now things have changed. The gospel which I preach among the Gentiles is the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20, 24. The gospel of the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And they was buried and they rose again the third day according to the scripture. You and I believe this gospel... 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, especially 3 and 4. This death, bare resurrection of Christ, we receive it as a final answer. Destroy religion and finally we are in the fellowship of His Son. He saves us and the Holy Spirit of God, Ephesians 1, 13. So after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you were sealed. Praise be to God. With that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest down payment, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the precious possession unto the praise of His glory. So, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. He calls three times my gospel. Three times he calls it my gospel. It's different from the gospel that Peter and James and John are preaching. You know this, you'll see it. But privately, to them which were of reputation, lest by any means should I run, I should run or run in vain. He didn't go straight away to all the church, also because in, in Galatia, you know, in this group, there were many Pharisees who turned, you know, to the faith and lots of Jews. And, and there were people that wanted you to be circumcised. So he had to speak with those or reputation, which will be the apostles. This wisdom is not a question of, probably, <coughs> surely, sorry, <coughs> Paul was a very clever, intelligent man. Because, you know, remember, in the flesh, oh yeah, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, Hebrew of Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin, you know. He was a top gun in that echelon, this elite of Israel. But things changed drastically. He, he said, you know, all this good for nothing. I want to know Christ and Him crucified and I want to preach Him because He saved me. I was a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious. And He saved me and now He gave me this glorious ministry. So He does the things according to the wisdom of God that God communicates to Him. Go and talk with those. No, we just don't tell everybody, anybody or everybody all together. Just talk with the apostles. 
But neither Titus was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Now, as I told you, there were these Jews, these Pharisees among them, and they say, yeah, 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 you believe Jesus, that's good, that's good, but you need to be circumcised and observe the law. All right. At this point, tell me. It's all vain. But anyway, Paul said, no, that's it. We withstood them, and Titus was not circumcised. Even though they were trying to, they would have loved that, you know. Because when they do the circumcision, it's just like what the Baptists now, they, they glory in your flesh. And he says, but, hey, and that because of force, brethren, look at this, and it was brought in. That's typical of the enemy, yeah. He comes, you know, like a, like a, a wild beast lying way to deceive you know holds it like a fox hmm. and that because of first brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty which we have in christ jesus that they might bring us into bondage oh yeah man <laughs> christ wants you free not free just to do whatever you want free to be saved and see or to to, to have a, the, the certainty of going to heavenly places with him in a glorified body when the time comes, while now you say you can serve him according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the preaching of Jesus Christ. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was hid for ages and generations, but now is revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit and by the scriptures of the prophets, Romans 16, 25. But these guys want to put you under bondage. And that's so typical religion. It's terrible. It's terrible. When I first believed in was the denomination, yeah, I had a tremendous joy because for the first time in my life, being Roman Catholic by birth, I didn't know anything. I didn't know. I was completely uh, Bible illiterate. And still, I'm learning. Don't, don't you think that I'm going around like I'm a professor. I'm just a simple believer. But the point of the matter is, they want to prove you, bring you under bondage. And of course, they want ties. To whom we gave place by subjection. To whom, Jesus is so glorious. We gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. What does it mean? The truth of the gospel of grace, Acts 20, 24. The gospel of Christ, Romans 1, 16. Why do you think that Paul, by inspiration of the ghost, wrote Romans 1, 16? For I'm not ashamed, King James Bible anyway, of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. I've got to repeat because people are looking for power in funny places. Unto salvation for everyone, excluding none, who believes what? The gospel of the cross. To the Jew first, the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. So he gets these two blocks of mankind, you know, the Jews with all the system of the law and everything. They were glory in that, you know. And the Gentiles, the Greeks, were glory in philosophy, you know. Aristotle, Plato, blah, blah, blah. Useless. You need Christ crucified, Christ buried, Christ risen. The glory belongs to the Lord. And you believe it, you see, by grace through faith. No works. So no man should boast. You can boast and glorify the Lord after you believe. And you allow God to save you to seal you with your spirit, to take you out of Adam and put you into Christ, out of Adam into Christ. And then you need for your own spiritual growth because you are saved and sealed by grace. That's it. It's done deal. Done deal. If you die five seconds later, you go to heavenly places because of Christ, because of the cross, because of the blood, not because of your religiosity, blah, blah, blah. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of this would seem to be somewhat a bit mm, sarcastic here. Yeah. Whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me. 
God accept no man person. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Don't we like to glory in the flesh? To glory in man, to think that because somebody preaches and teaches the word of God, it must be, you know, some kind of genius. Let's all worship him and follow him. And inside. No! If anything, we are servants by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord Almighty God. Servants. To bring glory to the owner, to the master, to the dominus, <laughs> to our Lord. And what is accomplished, praise God. But though this will seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me, God accept no man person. For they will seem to be somewhat in conference. They are the nodding to me. These are talking about the twelve, you know. In conference, in talking. Why did they okay, English. Why did not they add anything, nothing, to, to Paul? Because Paul has got the new glorious revelation in this dispensation of grace that came by revelation. Christ from heaven now is talking to Paul. This is what we need to understand. The Lord Jesus Christ is everything. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, in the prophetic program, Extremely important to read, understand, and believe that those are the few words of God, but to also understand that those things that He says to the, in the Gospels, even though they are for our learning, in terms of you know the salvation of our soul, they cannot be applied to us. They were not directed to us, but then, but to Israel, His earthly people. But then, of course, because He is God of the Jews, the Gentiles, of all men, of all mankind, don't forget that God is the possessor of heaven and earth. The devil is playing this game, but don't worry, he, he, he's losing. In due, in due time, you'll see. The point is, Christ now calls a specific apostle for us Gentiles who were really in that terrible condition, as I told you before, Ephesians 3.11, to give us the possibility by believing to be saved and still to belong to him for eternity. Thank you, Lord. What can we say? Thank you, Lord. Eh? So actually, Paul now adds to them. So he knew, he knew the, the prophetic program. He knew very well, didn't he? He's been now receiving revelations after revelation from heaven. From the throne of glory, Christ is revealing new revelations. That's why many people don't understand and they mix and they're confused because what Paul says is so different from what Peter and James and John and the rest of the twelve say. Not because... The enemies, oh no, no. They, they, they're both serving the Lord, but one, the, the, the twelve in the in the dispensation of, of the, 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 the preaching of the kingdom and Paul in the dispensation of grace of the preaching of the gospel of the cross for salvation, because Peter preached the cross, but not as the salvation that Paul uh, says, but as a mur murder indictment, you know, in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. To crucify him, you know, you're a bunch of killers, and now you're done because it's coming back, you know, judgment is coming. Oh, what we got to do? Paul is preaching, saying, We glory in the cross. Why? We, without that, we have no chance, we have no hope. And people still want to do the, the law, <laughs> thinking if they don't do the law, God cannot save them. Really, who in the world was able to obey the law? Except the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came under the law, he amplified the law. He fulfilled the law. He said, it, you know, I didn't come to abolish the law, to fulfill. He fulfilled it. It's God in the flesh, through man, through God. But as a man, he's not God the nature of Adam. He's a son of God. He's God the son, or oh, the, the begotten, the only begotten son at the resurrection. But he's born by the Spirit. He's God in the flesh. Before Abraham was, I am, he said. Come on now. I don't, you know. But this would seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were. It makes no matter to me. God accept no man's person. So, fly low, my dear brother. Talking to me. Fly low, Roberto. You're really nothing. But God is everything. Praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. 
but they will seem to be somewhat in conference, add them nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of, now that's why you need to have the King James Bible, because other Bible says two. What? Yes. They say, when they saw the gospel to the circ and circumcision, they say, you know, no, no, no. When they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, which is uncircumcised Gentiles, was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. You see? You see the difference? And then in brackets, for he, that's God, that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. The same was mighty me toward the Gentiles. So you understand now that this as circumcision is the Gentiles us. And when James, Cephas and John, normally it's Peter, James and John. Now in this case it's James, Cephas and John. Anyway, remember they said in Jerusalem, they didn't go to fulfill the great commission to all nations. Why? Because the nation of Israel rejected the king. They were not born again. So Peter said, okay, we can go. We got to St. Jerusalem. There was a great dispersion in Acts 8. But when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived, the grace that was given unto me. No, look at me, I'm fantastic. The grace that was given unto me. They gave it, they gave it to me and Barnabas, because it's Paul and Barnabas together. The right hands of fellowship. The right hands of fellowship. That we should go. Who? That we who? Paul and Barnabas. To unto the heathen. Pagans, Gentiles, us, and they unto the circumcision. My dear brothers, sisters, friends, or people that can't stand my voice, the reality is this there is a great divide here. If we don't see this, we're gonna be fooled, as I've been fooled for years and years, for decades in religion, by those in denominations that they want to put you in bondage, they want to control you, they want your money anyway. And they are giving you another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. Because if you think that you can be saved like a, a Jew at the time of Christ, you, you haven't got it. You, you're not part of that. You need simply, simply, simply believe how that Christ died for your sins. Oh, my sins, I'm not a sin. Oh, shh. Don't add another word at that point. Because you're so perfect. Go, go. No, the reality is all have sinned that come short. Of the glory of God, which means all. A L L. All have sinned. All sinners. And came short of the glory of God. We're done, haven't we? If in Romans 3 23 stops there, we're all done. First me, eh? But then continues, praise God. Being justified, being justified, made just. Freely. What does it mean, free? Um. How much have you got to give you, Jesus? One hundred dollars, one thousand, one million? Nothing! Free! He shed his blood. What more than that? Through the redemption, through the redemption, God buys you back. Which is, that is in Christ Jesus. So. Ha, ha, ha. But contrary, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, of the circumcision, the same was mad in me toward the Gentiles, the uncircumcision. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me a Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. That we should go unto the Eden and they unto the circumcision. Do you think that it is by chance that you have the four gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the earthly ministry of a great God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Israel? 
Matthew 15, 24, it said, but I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the Azoe, so that's no us, okay? Then you have the book of Acts. Thank God, because there's a transition book where you see the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the Jerusalem church, the persecution, you know, a bit of the growth of this church, Jerusalem church, to which the Lord added those who were on the way to salvation and so forth. But then you have the persecution of the disciples. Yeah, you got a few miracles, Philip, and the, but you have the persecution of the disciples, the dispersions, the, 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 the twelve stay in Jerusalem, don't go nowhere, and those get scattered abroad, that's why. And then you have also the, in, Acts 9, in Acts 7, you know, you have the, the stoning of Stephen, in Acts 8, the, the persecution, and then in Acts 9, you have the saving and calling of Saul, Paul, and to him from that moment, believe. And you know what happens? You know what happens? You have 13 letters then, 13 letters of Paul to the body of Christ. Even there are many Jews included, of course, because it's this gospel of Christ saved Jews and Gentiles. This way we get saved with our Israel, with our laws, with our covenants. Praise God. And then you have the Hebrews, where the, after Philemon, which is the 13th of the letters of Paul, begins with Romans, finishes with Philemon. You have the Hebrews epistles. Hebrews, which is written to the, let me see if I'm a scientist, if I'm a rocket scientist, to the Hebrews, which is no us. I never was part of any 12 of the, the 12 tribes. Do I despise? No way. <laughs> you must be kidding. But the Israel of God is not present in this time. Okay. By the way, and then you have first, second Peter. Two. He writes two. Peter writes two. Paul writes 13. Oh, you are exalting Paul. No, I want, it's the ministry. It's, it's because the message is so important. If I don't get the gospel that Paul preaches, I'm done. You know what I mean? I can't be saved. I got baptized in water. Hey, you got wet. We are baptized by the Holy Ghost when we believe and receive this gospel. Into the death of Christ, not in water. Mm. All right. And then to the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also forward to do. So now, churches say, we should remember the poor. Let's uh, make a collection for the poor. Let's go and help the homeless, the poor. By any means, if you have a chance, a possibility, the me uh, financial means, help anybody, including the poor. I mean, especially the poor. They got nothing. Eh? But that's not what he's talking about. These are what the poor saints in Jerusalem, those guys who have sold everything, their property, brought the money, the, the, the money to the apostle, apostles, the twelve, you can read in the book of Acts, because they were waiting for the coming of the kingdom, but the kingdom didn't come. <laughs> God failed. No way, Jose. God cannot fail. God is perfect. The people didn't believe him. If they don't believe that Jesus was the King, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, okay? The Shepherd of Israel, the High Priest, but number one, the Messiah, the King. How can he establish the kingdom of an, an unsaved nation? They had to be born again. There is a way he was healing them all, between other reasons. Because of what his people, the, the children's bread is the healing for Israel. Remember? They had to enter in the kingdom to be kings and priests, a royal priesthood unto the Lord. And no, no kings, no priests could be sick or maimed. They had to be whole from top to toe. They had to be, he cast all devils out of them. Imagine those guys serving the Lord full of devils. Impossible! You know what I mean. Anyway. And so they were poor now. The kingdom didn't come. And so said, let's remember, of course, you know. The same which I was, I also was forward to do. But then there's this part that the people don't like. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Because he was to be blamed. Paul, come on now. You withstood him to the face of the first Pope? <laughs> no, because that's what the Roman Catholic Pope say. You know, they had a... 
succession apostolic uh, succession Peter was the first pope he was not the first pope and by the way he never went to Rome and I'm from Rome and I can guarantee you he never went to Rome Paul went to Rome <laughs> he says the devil is really something man you know just go around turning everything according to his dastardly plans but when Peter was coming to Antioch I would sue him to the face because he was to be blamed why? For before that, certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. He, after the Lord said, don't call unclean what I call clean, remember? But when they were come from James, oh, James, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Oh, those Pharisees. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. In so much the Barnabas also was carried away with that dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, live after the manners of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compare thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We were Jews by nature and no sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Wow! But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. If somebody is listening, they are really fanatic about this law. The law is good, righteous, just God gave the law. My man cannot obey the law. The law is being uh, God, the law produces wrath because we will break the law. The wrath of God, bang, bang. That's why Christ is there. He takes the, the wrath of God. You know, He says that He God made Him Jesus to be seen for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us, that we might become, you know. The righteousness of Christ by grace through faith imputed imputation knowing that the man I love this knowing that the man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ which will be the gospel of the, of the grace of God even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners. What does it mean? Well, we're still in the flesh, we still sin. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which are destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. This is very, 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 very powerful. What does it mean, I'm crucified with Christ? Well, when Christ was crucified, God knowing the Son would believe, right? He crucified the, the believers. It's got to get rid of your flesh once and for all. And that's the only way. The solution of God for my flesh, your flesh, the flesh is crucifixion. We say, no, oh, Lord, heal me. Bless me financially, you know. This and that. I am crucified with Christ and the world is crucified to him, you know. Nevertheless, I live in the body, you know. Yet, no, I, but Christ lives in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your life is it with Christ in glory. In, 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 in. <laughs> Your life is it with Christ. When Christ who is alive shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Yeah, more or less, you know, I'm just quoting with my faulty memory. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet no I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
Grazie, ma c'è sta più. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Come on, Galatians, what I'm gonna do now? Don't worry about me, I'm really good, you know. I accept Jesus to my heart. I made him Lord of my life. <laughs> I go to church every Sunday. I pray the uh, every, you know, our Father prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. I give tithes and offerings. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus, this, in the name of Jesus. I, I name it, I claim it, I take it, I take that. You're wasting time. You don't realize, unless Christ died, was better was again, and you believe that, this everything is useless, it's vain anyway. And God, did Jesus Christ, I'm asking myself, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I know, sometimes I'm, I'm, because of all the years I suffer with religion, I get very hot, but I forgot what I was going to say. The reality is this, did Jesus, no, I, I remember now, has the, did Jesus come here to create denominations? I'm asking. Asking for a friend. Personally, I don't think so. He came to save sinners. Once the sinners are saved, they are part of the body of Christ, which is a new creature, which is the church. The body of Christ, which is a spiritual body. Not an organization, an organism. Where Christ is there, the world members. Now, we, after we're saved, we need to read and study the letters to allow the, 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 the doctrine of grace to transform the spirit of our mind that's it you know to be transformed we study all the scripture we should at least because from Genesis to Revelation is the pure words of God but we need to readily divide we need to readily divide study to show that self approved unto God the workman needs not to be shamed right the body of the word of truth but sham vain profane babblings because they will increase unto more ungodliness your life is it with Christ in glory when Christ with the Lord shall appear then she also appear with him in glory I just remember probably because I'm an old man in the memory <laughs> this is incredible this is glory this is marvelous He's telling me, you, us, believers in this glorious gospel, that we are crucified with Christ. So what does God see when he sees me, you, us, the body of Christ? Christ! Nevertheless, I live. Okay, we still live in this body. Yet, no I, eh? No I. It's not about me, myself, and I, the religion of Satan. But Christ lives in me. How? by faith but it does because we are sealed with the spirit and the life which i now live in the flesh you see i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me i don't know the, I, I, don't, I don't know if god loves me you know i'm going through difficult times we all go through difficult times in this earth why we are in this flesh we live don't we in a present evil world who is the god with the small with low, low case g satan the enemy of god and the enemy of mankind eh? the one who really hates paul in a special way because paul has got this close gospel of grace that save the ungodly sin as enemies of god the children of wrath children of disobedience like me you and everybody in the flesh now we are children of God by grace because of Christ because we were crucified with him he crucified us and we live say how do I know they lost me that's it who loved me and gave himself for me in Galatians 4 said Christ chapter 1 verse 4 just let I go there one moment Galatians 1 verse 4 grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. This, I don't know if we get it. What can I do, oh Lord, what can I give it to you? Stop. Who gave himself. What do you want more than this? What do, we, what do I want more than this? Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God 
and our Father. And by the way, you are you have the God that Christ who gave Himself for our sins. God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, God the Spirit. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let's go back. Let's go back where I was. Galatians 2. Of course, we are in the King James Bible. There are no other Bibles. This is the only one. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yeah, no, I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The cross. But God commends his love towards us. Romans 5. The way we were yet without strength, sinners, ungodly sinners, enemies of God, Christ died for us. You can't beat that. Nothing compares to Christ, you understand? Because Christ is God, is the Almighty God, everlasting God. At a certain point in history, according to the, the will and the, the, the purpose, the, the wisdom of God, He comes on earth, you know. According to prophecy, you know, Genesis 3.15, Isaiah 7.14. He's born by the Spirit. He's God. He's got the blood of the Father running in his vein. He has got no Adam, Adamic nature. But there's real man. He's in a body, in the likeness of sinful flesh. But he was not sinful. He said, who of you convinced me of sin? And it's nobody could, eh? <laughs> Glorious, marvelous. And then he dies on that cross. And Israel says, ah! The twelve say, no, Jesus. Peter said, no, you're not going to go. Oh, shh. Get behind me, said, you know, you, you have the, the mind, the things of God, and the things of me. Anyway, I'm paraphrasing. The point of the matter is, he could very well say, you know what? We created them. When I say we, some people said, hello, he must shut up. The extraterrestrial, man, these people are so ignorant. The Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the three in one, one God, God that created mankind. He said, okay, they betrayed us. Adam and Eve, they're gone there. Let's destroy them all. You think you could stop him? <laughs> If God wants to wipe everybody off the face of the earth once and for all and start again something new somewhere else, you think you could say, no, you can't do this. Nobody can withstand God, you understand? Because he's love with a big, gigantic L-O-V-E. Demonstrated in the fact that Christ, instead of being different or angry and upset, he said, I'm going to save them. That's the plan before the foundation of the world to create a new creature, the body of Christ, where all men, Jews and Gentiles, men and women, doesn't matter. Bond or free, doesn't matter. By believing and receiving this glorious gospel, the free gift of eternal life, they can be saved and sealed for eternity, praise God. And we have such a glorious position because we're going to go in heavenly places because it says already in Ephesians 1, 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? Where? In Israel. No, in heavenly places in Christ. We are accepted in the beloved. The only begotten son, the beloved. That's my beloved. My, that's my beloved son, he said to Israel. In whom I'm well pleased. Listening to him, you know, they have to listen to him. Shouldn't we? Yeah, we do it through the letters of Paul. Because the, the words that the Paul writes, they are the commandments of the Lord. That as Jesus talking from heaven, Jesus said, The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Thank you, Jesus. They give. You remember Peter said, when Jesus said, You want to leave me too? You know, the Lord asked them, you know, do you want to leave? Like the rest of these people. And Peter, Peter, you know, he said, No, Lord, to whom do we go? You have your words of eternal life. And the same thing now, you know. Why do you want to go to another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, another dispensation and, and put yourself there when the Lord actually is doing a new thing, is giving grace in this a dispensation of grace, Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, Paul talks about that by Revelations. 
and practically is in the in the business. I don't know if I can use the expression. Is in into saving souls because he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The door is open. You know this expression, wide open. It's wide open. It's really wide open. Christ is saying, if you go to Christ, he never rejects you. But you got to go according to what he reveals, which is, by the way, the cross, you know. Don't bypass the cross. I confess my sin. He knows already. Don't, don't waste time. <laughs> if we got to confess the sin every day, we're going to spend our life confessing sins because we sin continually. We words those and deeds. No, no, me. Yes, me. You might learn to sin less, but you're never going to be sinless in the flesh till you are in the flesh until the grave. You know, you're going to leave this dead corpse. You know, when Paul says, Oh, wretched man, in Romans 7, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because as a saved believer, he had a problem with his own flesh, like you have with your own flesh, unless you want to lie. No, I won't go problems, you know. Ah, come on, you know. Come down from the perch. Be real. Put your feet on the ground because your spirit is in heavenly places, but you're still here. <laughs> he loved us. Because you love Paul. Paul is the first and the part, and you love the body of Christ, every member. You just believed yesterday, you are loved the same. Another thing, we all on the same ground. And gave himself for me. We, we have different functions in the body, of course, you know. But we're all the same. We don't need to exalt man. We need to give glory to the one who receives the glory because he's worthy of glory, praise, thanksgiving, adoration and worship in spirit and truth. That's the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, I do not frustrate. I do not frustrate the grace of God. How can you frustrate? You want to do something different. I want, I want to do the law. Now, listen to me. You've never been able to obey the law before. Now you believe you're saved and saved. And now you think you obey, you can obey. Try. You're going to fail miserably and going to feel so depressed and compressed and distressed. Then you think, and you start to think, maybe I'm not saved. Because you think, because the religion, that once you're saved, you you know, stuck to the wall, a super saint, you know, never sent anymore. Christ in you is the upper glory. You are in Christ, God puts you in Christ, but then he tells you that Christ in you is the upper glory, not you. When Christ who is alive shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. And you're going to receive a new glorified body. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians 5. He talks in 1 Corinthians 15. From verse 51 he explains with the resurrection and in Thessalonians chapter 4 when he talks about the catching up of the body of Christ people say Jesus is coming Jesus is coming wait a second what do you mean because he's coming the second time to Israel after that the body of Christ is caught up to meet the Lord in the air thank you Jesus the dead in Christ right first and then we get caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air the shout you remember when Jesus uh, you know raised Lazarus what did he say Lazarus, come out. No, <laughs> with a loud voice. Lazarus! <laughs> and God is just called Lazarus. Oh, the dead will come out. He's the resurrection of the life, you know. Praise God. He is the, he is, you see, from the, the Gospels, we learn Him, His nature, and His quality and attributes. And the number one thing that we need to learn, that God is love. Love. L-O-B. It's also life life eternal life is also light when he turns the light on the darkness has got to flee <laughs> but he's also righteous god so he needs to judge sin and if you say okay if this morning the lord says well, you know what i'm sick and tired of what these people are doing i'm just gonna smash them all but he's not gonna do that because he's dispensing grace and god is never goes against his own words once the word has come out from his mouth it's the perfect word you know you can study this book from Genesis to Revelation for 100 years. If you live 100 years, you never come to the end because it's so deep. It's just grow. It's the pure words of God. One thing you, 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 you learn, that God put his word above his name. Also, because with the word, you identify God because Christ is the word. Seven times with the W, B, uh, you know, capital W is the word before incarnation. Seven times you find the word. 
In the beginning was the word, capital W, and the word was, was with God, and the word was God. You know, and it gets incarnated. You, you can read it, First John. But the point of the matter is, our God is perfect, is righteous. The time is coming, will come, when those who have rejected the only way to be saved, which is the gospel of grace, they will judge for according to their works. And that's not going to be funny, you know. Because our works, <laughs> our righteous fifty acts, and our works, they're all corrupt. But did Jesus said that it, from the good tree, you get good fruit. From the bad tree, bad fruit. Maybe, you know, even, even sinners sometimes, you know, they can show kindness or something right morally, you know. But doesn't make it any difference you need to be translated from this kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun heavenly kingdom and that's an operation of god you need to be taken out of adam and put into christ and you need to have the spirit of christ come and dwell in you because otherwise you don't belong you none of is romans tells you in chapter 8 if you don't have the spirit of christ dwelling in you and the spirit of christ dwelling in you it doesn't manifest through anything physical fleshly in this dispensation of grace once again once again it's all spiritual it's all by grace through faith it's all by faith we walk by faith and not by sight faith in what in his words i don't understand everything imagine if i do after 11 years coming to the dispensation of grace i'm still daily learning and i say i was wrong here I said, let me fix this in the day in which i'm like uh, wood i'm oh, right and then mm, not really let me check again i do not frustrate the grace of god you need the cross that by resurrection for if righteousness which gets imputed when you believe the gospel of the grace of god come by the law then christ is dead in vain and you think that god would do something like that the god almighty god the, i mean the wisdom of god that his knowledge is infinite his, his wisdom is we see like in a through a glass darkly i mean you know we haven't arrived yet you know what i mean do you think that god would do something in vain he would allow his own only begotten son the word to die for us in vain no but you make it in vain when you say uh, righteousness come by the law look at me look at you what with dust in the flesh you know people are grass vanity our thoughts vain thoughts the, the the thoughts of the wise of people they say they have vanity the lord knows that just understand you are the sinner christ is the savior don't pretend anything just come to yes that's it i'm the sinner christ is the savior how can i be saved believe in the lord jesus christ believe our christ how the Christ died for your sins, all of them, according to the scriptures. And he was buried, he rose again, the third day according to the scriptures. And you're saved. At the cross, he did what he did, but we get saved by the cross when we believe. You understand the difference? At the cross, you had to die, bury, resurrect. Nobody understood really what was going on. The Messiah of Israel. They had a stamping block for Israel. The Messiah, instead of getting rid of the Romans and bringing back the glory of the, you know, the kingdom of David and Solomon, look, look at that, look at that. Look. Crucified among two thieves, two malefactors. Destroyed, look at him, you know, this crown, blood, smashed before going to the cross, you know, lashes and everything nails big uh, big nails the romans were not so kind they were really cruel going through which yeah, his flesh last rate is stripped you know, i mean you know and and then he speaks seven times on the cross oh <laughs> and he shouts from the cross while the people are there say, ah, if you really are the son of god you know Oh, if God, you know, come down from the cross, we will believe. And there were the bulls of Bashan, all these devils dancing. Because the devil thought, I kill him, I kill him, I kill him, I kill him, not God. Christ the man died. Christ the God doesn't die. 
In fact, anyway, he rose again. And this is another glorious thing, you know, is the resurrection. The Father resurrected him, the Spirit resurrected him, he resurrected himself. We glory in the cross. We understand that the law is right and just, but it is weak because of our flesh. Because the, less, uh, the law says, do the right thing, this and that, and we can't do it. And by the way, we Gentiles, we were never put under the law, never. God didn't give the law to us, He gave it to Israel. But we have in our conscience, but we are under grace now, Romans 6. We are under grace. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I think I finished because, as usual, I speak too much. Remember the great divide. The gospel of the uncircumcision will go to the hidden, the Gentiles, the gospel of the circumcision with Peter and James Remember, goes to the Hebrews. Hebrew epistles, but the 13 letters of Paul is where you find the instructions, the doctrine, which is the mind of Christ. And, you know, slowly, slowly, the more you read, and you can say all the time, even when you don't understand, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> because I don't understand, because I'm Dumb as a brick, me, you know. But you, through the Spirit and the Word, help me to understand. Maybe you don't understand today, but you understand tomorrow. But it doesn't matter. The Lord will give you understanding in all things. But you need to read and study. And that's not to be saved, because you're already saved by grace. But now that you're saved, learn how He did it, why He did it, what is the purpose of all this. And the glory belongs to whom? To the Lord, the Father, the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to all.